the warning of ecological Armageddon. This uh, Damian Carrington writing over at the uh, the Guardian. This should concern all of us tremendously right now. We are animals, we human beings. We require the same food and water and air and living space and all that kind of stuff that every other animal does. And we are part of an interdependent web of life on this planet in which animals and plants interact with each other in ways that, you know, presumably and, and hopefully are positive for all above. In other words, a syner synergistic interaction. It, it's, not, it's not the world of Trump, you know, where one guy wins and everybody else has to lose. It's, it's where everybody wins when it works properly. Well, in Germany, they started this project back in 1989. It was a group of originally amateur entomologists. Now the professionals have gotten in on it. And they, they had uh, a number of sites all over Germany. I believe it was around 1,500 sites around Germany where uh, people were collecting, they, they put out these traps, and uh, which are, you know, totally standing out. Yeah, 1,500 samples uh, at 63 different nature reserves. They've been doing this since 1989. And what the traps do is they, they collect a certain number of insects over a certain period of time, or, or, or it's, not, it's not so much a certain number, but they collect whatever they collect over a certain period of time. And it's like, you know, flypaper, right? Sticky stuff. And so then once they've got the insects, they measure the total mass of the insects and it gives you a sense of how many insects are out there. In this case, flying insects specifically. And the reason why flying insects are a big deal, as Professor Dave Golson of Sussex University in the UK says, insects make up about two thirds of all life on earth. But there has been some kind of horrific decline. We appear to be making vast tracts of land inhospitable to most forms of life and are currently on course for ecological Armageddon. If we lose the insects, then everything is going to collapse. Think about that for a minute. Every bit of food you eat is there as a result of an insect pollinating something or virtually, or maybe not mushrooms, but that's about it. You say, well, I eat meat. Well, that cow is eating plants, because cows are vegetarians. That cow is eating plants that were pollinated. No pollinators, no cows. So they, they've been sampling these insects in Germany since 1989, and what they found, and which is not that far ago, right? not that long ago, we're talking about 28 years here, if my math is right, of sampling these things. The average and the annual average mass weight of the number of, you know, or the, of, of the insects that were collected fell by 76% over the 27 year period, but the fall was even higher, 82% in the summer when insect numbers reached their peak. Previous reports of insect declines have been limited to particular insects, such as the uh, European grassland butterfly, which has declined about 50% in the last decade, according to Damian Carrington, the environment editor over at The Guardian. But the new research captured all flying insects, including wa wasps and flies, which are rarely studied, making it a much stronger indicator of decline. Lynn Dix at the University of in East Anglia in the UK said, and I quote, if total insect, flying insect biomass is genuinely declining at this rate, about 6% per year, it is extremely concerning. Flying insects have really important ecological functions for which their matters number a lot. They pollinate flowers, bees, moths, and butterflies are as important as bees for many, excuse me, flies, moths, and butterflies are as important as bees for many flowering plants, including some crops. They provide food for many animals. You know, there, there are animals that eat insects, right? Be it birds, there are birds that are just insect eaters, swallows. Bats, some mammals, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Flies, beetles, and wasps are also predators and decomposers, controlling pests and cleaning up the place generally. Now, th there's another way of sampling insects, and this is, the, I thought this was really interesting. He, uh, the, the author of this piece for uh, Damien Carrington for The Guardian, says another way of sampling insects, car windshields, 
has often been anecdotally used to suggest a major decline in flying insects, with people remembering many more bugs squashed on their windshields in the past. Goulson says, I think this is real. I drove right across France and back this summer, just when you'd expect your windshield to be splattered all over, and I literally never had to stop to clean the windscreen, the windshield. So are we seeing an ecological devastation? Are you seeing evidence of an ecological dev dev devastation? If so, we've got a serious problem. This, uh, and, and they don't know what's causing this, by the way. They believe that climate change is a piece of it. Agricultural practices are a piece of it, which would include the use of pesticides. But they haven't been able to identify a single source. It looks like a synergy, a, a combination of these sources working together to destroy the insect population, which could destroy the human population ultimately. Not a good thing. Meanwhile, back here in the United States, as uh, Scott Pruitt over at the, uh, uh, the EPA is saying, oh yeah, pesticides, no problem. Toxic pesticides, poison farm worker, no problem. You know, uh, yeah, that's, that's just fine. And of course, these pesticides are killing our insects, but, but also these same conservatives who are trying to protect the pesticide industry from pesky consumers and pesky flying insects they're not trying to protect you or me or our children. This, uh, a, a story from um, David Ferguson over at Raw Story, and he's citing an article in the Daily Beast. Nine-year-old boy with aggressive brain tumor received a letter from his family's insurance company. His father's a, New York, a retired New York Police Department uh, officer, Wayne Richardson. And uh, he said, as HIP Health Plan of New York, we try hard to provide you with access to quality health care services that meets your needs. And then they explain why they're not going to pay for this little boy, this nine-year-old boy who's at St. Jude's Hospital. Now, St. Jude's is willing to offer him the treatment for free, but the health insurance company is refusing to reimburse them, meaning that, they are, that those resources that St. Jude's is going to have to spend on this kid could have been spent on other children who literally don't have insurance, which is St. Jude's whole thing. But they write, when we, received, when we reviewed the information given to us about this request, we've decided to deny coverage of the following medical services uh, for inpatient, inpatient hospitalization at St. Jude. We've determined that your services are not medically necessary. This guy's got a, this, this little boy, this nine-year-old boy has a brain tumor. And they wanted to try a new medication on him. And the, the insurance company says, this combination of medications is not the standard of care for this type of cancer and is considered experimental investigational at this time. Therefore, this request for clinical trial treatment at St. Jude's Hospital is not medically necessary and is denied. Aren't our health insurance companies wonderful? They just, you know, they're always looking out for their stockholders. You know, as everybody in America who's part of the top 1% should be really proud of this, right? Because you can invest in a health insurance company and actually make dividends Take some of their profits, make dividends that you only have to pay 20% tax on, income tax on. That's just a marvelous thing. I mean, nine-year-olds may not get health care. They might die of cancer. But, hey, we're making money.